Welcome, welcome, Scorpio. This is G. We're going through your March 2023 video. There's a lot to talk about here. We've got our two usual changes that happen every month, but we've got some additional big things happening. So there's a lot. Let's dive in right now. We begin with March. March 3rd, 4th, 5th, 6th, and then we hit March 7th. This is a closure and an ending time. We're having a full moon in Virgo, so it represents a completion. Something is over, something is done, you finish something. It's a completion, it's a let go. This could have to do with a health routine, a health habit. Job may be involved, even a work routine, some sort of a task, some sort of a list. You know how you have like the to-do lists? That's Virgo energy, right? And if there's a full moon, that means you've completed your to-do list. Yeah. So some sort of a project you were working on, maybe you've just completed it. Maybe it's over and it's ended. Pets could be involved in this. All right. I have a friend. She serves different homes. Uh, sometimes she goes in and does cleaning. And then sometimes she goes in and actually takes care of the pets. If people are on vacation, it's pet sitting. Uh, sometimes she'll stay there, but she's taking care of the pets. She's feeding them, right? She's making sure they go out for their walk. She's making sure they, they're they tended to while their mom and dad are gone and on vacation. So maybe that job is ending. Maybe she no longer wants to do that. That was just an example, Scorpio. Okay. So now let's look to see where this ending happens in your chart. When I look for you, this is in your 11th house of friends. This is group energy. What did you do when you were with group energy? There was something you did. It was about serving people in the group. There was some sort of way in which you provided things for others, but it was practical. It was likely tangible. It could involve cleaning cleaning and organizing for others. This is a full moon of completions and it only is a big deal if you have something at the degrees. Okay. So the full moon's at like 17 degrees of Virgo. So for this full moon, if you have something in your chart that's at like 15, 16, 17, 18, even 19 degrees, then you may feel this. You may understand it and you may know what it is in your life. You're like, I'm not doing that job anymore. I'm done, right? Because it's scheduling, it's calendars, it's projects. Virgo knows how to put things together, how to connect the dots. It's the troubleshooter of the Zodiac. It, it It's good at cleaning, especially for others here, which is what this would be, like cleaning for groups. Like my same friend would used to go into the gym and um, even for her church, would go in and clean for the church, would go in and clean for the preschools, would go in and clean for the gym. This is all that. It's a place where people gather, where there are groups of people. And she decided, I'm not doing that anymore. Like, I'm done. This would also fit into that category. Okay. Now, you may do fun things with your friends. My friend just happens to do it in a way where she's making money to do the things that she's good at, right? She goes in there. She's like lightning man, which is Aquarius, Virgo and Aquarius, speed cleaner, Absolutely. And if I've ever seen her cook, yes, speed cook, speeds clean, because it's Aquarius. It's like lightning, right? So it's a closure, it's an ending. Now, that's not all that's closing and ending, all right? Um, this, this degree, I did an extra bit of homework for this. Like, I wrote lots of notes for this one. This degree with this Virgo, I kept hearing to just go deeper and it's in and it, it, keywords came up and it was volcanic eruptions, right? So now this has to do with our emotions. Don't get all freaked out when I say this. I know like our world is, yeah, things are changing and yeah, there's a lot of uncomfortable earth things that have happened and lots of lives lost. But it, you know, this is more of like a visual. When you see a volcano, you see like the sparks flying up, you see the lava, you see a volcano erupting. Um, this visual is meant to talk about something that was below the surface, something that was hidden. And it doesn't mean hidden like it was bad. It just means there may have been emotions. There may have been beliefs. There may have been hidden ideals, right? There may have been um, just very idealistic thoughts or beliefs, perceptions even, like rose-colored glasses that were below the surface that you might not have been aware of. And so this kind of stuff will come out into the open at this time, right? And it is that event right? That coming out into the open, like a conversation, a phone call, a communication of some sort that triggers it. And there's like, okay, this is over. So for to give you an example, my friend, um, maybe the people she's cleaning for at a particular location, if it's a business, right? Let's just pretend it's uh, at the gym. Maybe something happens there. Maybe she has a conversation with somebody and she was just like, oh, 
okay. You know, maybe someone says something and, and she doesn't appreciate it. Like maybe they say something about the way she cleans. I mean, I don't know, but there could be something like that where she decides I'm not doing this anymore. You know, maybe she realizes the amount of work that she puts in, she doesn't get enough back for the amount of time she puts in. It could be simple as that. You just kind of have almost like a revelation, you know, you almost have like a revelation because it's about subconscious perfections and high ideals. Okay. That's what it's about. So we also at this time on the same day, on the same day, Saturn moves from the sign of Aquarius to the sign of Pisces. It's, it's kind of fascinating because again, Pisces energy is being activated because Pisces is the opposite of Virgo. And I was talking about subconscious perfections, and that is Virgo energy because Pisces is the perfection at the other end of Virgo, right? So if Saturn goes there, it's all of a sudden Saturn leaving Aquarius, leaving the group energy, leaving your 11th house. Hold on, I got a kitty cat. Virgo, here comes the kitty cat. Come on, who already had dinner. And it's Taffy. She's been doing this all day because it's all Virgo readings today because it's Virgo full moon. And she has just been in here way more than often. Um, so cats, cats, pets, domestic pets, animals. That's why I use the example of, you know, dog sitting or cat walking or, or feeding and, and just looking after pets. Um, yeah. Grooming possibly pet groomer. Absolutely. So Saturn leaving your 11th house meant it was the restrictions and there were rules like with your friends. Um, you know, sometimes when that happens, you know, yeah, there was just order. There was rules and regulations and order with friends. And, and you might have had some soured relationships over the years, or you might have figured, I don't need to see my friends right now for whatever reason, because Saturn represents work. So there might have been friends that you were working for, right? Saturn, wherever Saturn goes, Saturn is rules. I'm looking for my pen because Saturn is material and tangible. It's about our long-term goals, okay? And so wherever Saturn is, it's our long-term goals and ambitions, our career, and we're trying to achieve something. So leaving Aquarius means I'm not working for the group anymore. I'm not working for my friends anymore. Like that's done. I'm now going into Pisces energy because that's where Saturn is going into Pisces. So for Scorpio, what I love about this is now Saturn is trining Scorpio because it's going into Pisces, which is water. Water trines water. Scorpio is water. Pisces is water. You get it? Right. Trines are beneficial, makes ease in some way. So when I look at this chart, this tells me that Saturn's going into your fifth house. Okay. So Saturn entering into your fifth house energy, your fifth house is your creations. It's romance. It's dating. It's mating. It's creating. It's your children. What this tells me is if you get Saturn in your fifth house, Saturn representing work, because there's a lot of ways this can look, Saturn representing work. Fifth house can also be uh, how we take a risk with our body. So maybe you stopped working for the gym. Maybe you're going to work for something that's a little bit more on the creative side. You know, maybe like an art studio or something because it's Pisces energy. It's sound. It's theater. It's the movies. Woo, this sounds interesting. Maybe you can go make some bigger money, right? Because Saturn's moving into Pisces. This could be working for the church. Yep, because it's Pisces energy, which is spirituality and, and, and can be religions, but definitely a building and a structure that serves society. Pisces is also, like I said, the movie theater, movie house, right? Doing some work like that. Uh, but Saturn can also be uh, somebody that's older, a masculine individual, right? Whether they're male or female or however they identify, masculine energy, okay? Masculine energy. Now, for some of you, Saturn going there, Saturn can represent this older person coming into your life. But now this older person that you looked up to is dipping into your house of romance. Yeah. Interesting. You tell me what happens with this one. Like you could be dating someone that's older is what this could mean, right? You could all of a sudden look at somebody differently, or maybe somebody brand new comes into your life that's older and that you, um, you know, they kind of fit into this category of somebody you would be, um, that you'd like to joke around with, that you'd like to have a good time with. The other thing I will add is that the fifth house is fun and joy and laughter, right? Comedy. But see, when Saturn goes through there, it makes it more serious because that's what Saturn is. So we're mixing fifth house, which is Leo and fun, 
and yeah, laughter and having a good time and taking a risk with my body with Saturn and Saturn's more serious. It's more about responsibilities, right? So it's like you're mixing work and play together at this point with this, with this mixture. All right. So that's Saturn and it will be there for two and a half years in your Pisces energy. And this is your fifth house of fun, romance, joy, creativity, and taking risks with my body. Yeah. Dating, mating, relating. Now the next beginning is a, is a beginning. It's a new moon energy. It's new moon in Aries. Yeah. You see Taffy down there. Yeah. You can see she's getting her little rubs on. <laughs> she's getting her little rubs on. She's been very, yeah, she's been waiting all day to be, to be massaged and, and get her little loves. Once she gets them, she's good. She kind of disappears then for like a full day. I'll only see her at feeding time. And then she comes back and she's like, okay, it's been 24 hours. I need my little rubs again. Yeah. And then when she needs them, she lets you know she she definitely is present. So the Aries new moon for Scorpio. All right. Scorpio new moon. I'm sorry. Aries new moon. Hey, yeah. See how Scorpio new moon came out? Because they have the same ruler. Aries ruler is Mars. Well, Mars has also been connected to the sign of Scorpio. So it's physical. It's your body. It tends to be, it, it, it's not going to ever back down from a fight. Mars was born to fight. It was born for battle. Now, where is Aries in your chart? That's how we know where this new beginning is. For Scorpio, this is in your, oh, you do have new work coming. You're having a new beginning in your house of work, sixth house. So it's your daily routines. It can also be your health. So you might be doing things for your health that you weren't doing before or just changing something with your health, like a new workout routine. You've got Aries there and you've got a new moon there. So it's a new beginning, right? So there's something new beginning. Now I said work because it can actually be the work that you do, right? And I know my friend, like the gym that she was cleaning at, she was literally there as a person, as a client first doing workouts, right? So this could be a, a person who was working at the gym, but you don't have to be cleaning. Maybe you'll be the workout instructor, right? Maybe you'll just be having a new job altogether, a new routine or a new client, right? This could also have to do with your physical body, but not just in workouts because it's sixth house, which is alternative, alternative things for my body, alternative routines with my body. So there might be something you're doing that you're mixing it up. But remember, Aries is very independent. It's, it, 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 you know, at times it feels good about being around a group, but at this time, it's really more about like, hey, this is my body. This is what I need or this is what I don't need. Right. It's very much in a very big way about independent action because it's at a world axis point. Right. So globally, we'll be hearing things. It makes me think of NATO when I see this because it's a world axis point. Yeah. And so uh, a new beginning at that big, big zero degrees is a big deal, right? It's fiery. It's passionate. It, it wants to start stuff. It wants to be first. First is a big deal with Aries energy being first. And there's also something else that happens. It's not on the very same day, but two days later, Pluto comes to town. Yeah. Pluto enters the sign of Aquarius. Okay. Aquarius. Now Aquarius is friends. It's group energy right? And Pluto is changes at a very deep level. All right. So for all of us who our friends are, that is all changing. It's all changing for all of us. And it doesn't have to be like your best friend type of energy because it's group energy. So think about, think about, um, like for myself, as an example, if I were to be involved in something with a group activity, it would be people who are sp like spiritually minded or people who are into like ghost hunting, anything with the occult and the ethereal realm and astrology. And by the way, this is also astrology. Pluto is going to be transforming astrology. Yeah. Yeah. Woohoo. I can't wait. Been waiting since the day I was born for this. So um, yeah, I think this means astrology will absolutely one day be, yeah, the college level, be taught in a college course. Whew, that's been my dream. That has been my dream. I know I'm a, such a geek. Anyway, so obviously it would be a non-credit course at first, but over time, over time when people see the validity of it, right, uh, we'll see what happens. So it's transforming and changing group group. And it's also Aquarius is the angelic realm, 
So people can be, be getting vis visuals and visitations, which I've been kind of talking about in the last few videos. If, if you haven't seen them, there's been some, especially for early degrees of Taurus energy, there's going to be some powerful stuff happening. Um, and this Pluto would square that in Aquarius, right? So something powerful may be disturbing at first because you're not used to it and it's shocking even, right? Angels, you know, and all that stuff. Um, but group activity advancements for humanity inventions, that is Aquarius. It's also science. All right. So now for Scorpios, this is in your home. This is in the fourth house. Your fourth house represents home and family. So something is changing with home and family. It's on a deep level. Okay. It's on a very deep level. So it's your emotions. All right. It can be things from the past. It can be tribal energy, right? Like when we think of soul's history, remember Pluto is about power, but it's our soul's power. Okay. And it demands that we have a purpose with that power. It demands that we not just be like all nilly willy with it and that we're abusive with it. No, 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 no. If we abuse the power that Pluto endows upon us, okay, and I understand Pluto, yeah, there's a supreme being above Pluto, I get it. There's creator, there's the universe, there's God, there's Allah, there's Yahweh, whatever your supreme being is, I get it. But Pluto has the ability to come calling. It's Pluto's job. Who are the ones that were given the great responsibility and the great power? If you've abused it, if you've thrown others aside for the sake of you being the one of, of power and authority so that it can all be for your own good and nobody else's, you're going to be like, it's not going to be so great. Pluto's coming, right? However, if you are altruistic, if you make sure you're not doing it just for yourself, you're doing it for the group, right? The best you can, right? Obviously not everybody can get covered, but if you're doing the best you can for the group, it's going to be okay. Pluto's coming to transform and change that group and, and, and how that group functions, how it operates. Okay. So this is inventions. This is air. So this could be the airlines, but in your home, it's your emotions. It's your feelings. It can be mom energy and family, people who feel like mother, even if, even though it might not be your own mother, people who feel like mother in your life. Okay. So it can be friends who feel like mom. There can be a mother wound that you are associated with. Like from your real mom, like your birth mom. Did you know your birth mom? Like there can be real wounds associated with this. And Pluto is coming to change and transform those wounds. All right. Coming to change and transform your emotional world. Okay. Just be aware. Pluto tends to bring up what is hidden. And I want you to just think this through for a minute. Okay. If Pluto is bringing up what's hidden, typically what is hidden can be fears. All right. So just keep that in mind. Just keep that in mind, all right? And, and the goal with fears is to not let our fears control us, to face them. And that's how we control them. And I'm only saying this because myself and a whole lot of other people, like we've been dealing with an increase of amount of fears because Pluto has been showing us and Pluto has been rearing its head and it's just been showing fears that we have that likely have nothing to do with the realities of this lifetime of us in our, in our world. Now you follow. So Pluto being in the motions and, and it, and it could be fears. This is just, you know, just for a few months in 2023, and then it's going to back out and go into Capricorn, but just be aware and be prepared that Pluto will be coming back here and it will be staying here in that house of Aquarius in your fourth house for 20 years until 2044. All right. So this tells me that if you've got Aquarius in your fourth house, it's almost like, do you live with your friends? Do your friends live with you? Right. When I see Aquarius in the fourth house, um, it, you know, it really makes me feel like um, I follow incredible tiny homes, Randy Jones, if you don't know who he is and if you aren't following incredible tiny homes, like I, I see this. Totally. Because this is a guy who wants nothing more than to make housing affordable for everybody and not garbage, right? Quality housing, not big and crazy. He's incredible, tiny homes, right? But to make affordable, quality housing available for everybody. And he really wants to do that. Like you can see it in him. And I've looked at his chart. <laughs> so this man's sincere, right? He's sincere. But what is going on with the little homes is they're not 
allowed everywhere. Like you literally have to create a community for these homes before they can actually even be sold. So that's what he's doing. He's creating and developing land all across the United States so that these people who have these homes have a place to put them. Right. So this is that. This is organizing groups. This is Pluto and Aquarius group energy. This is home. Absolutely. It's revolutionizing, transforming and changing the way we look at a home in addition to your feelings. <laughs> so that will be for the next 20 years, but that will not be until Pluto comes back into your fourth house, which isn't until 2024, about a year from now. All right. So that wraps up your March, 2023. It was a doozy. It was a lot. I'm worn out. I need to go take a break. I need to go lay down now. <laughs> Thank you for your time. Hope you enjoyed it. And I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye. Below the video, I'll have all the degrees for those of you who like to pay attention to the degrees in your chart. Again, if you don't know and you want to know, just comment below.